Welcome back. President Biden's border policy is now facing criticism from his own party. 14 House Democrats joining a GOP-led resolution which condemns Biden's immigration policies. The resolution says Biden, quote, has purposefully violated U.S. immigration law. Yesterday, Biden said he does not plan on taking any executive action to address the record number of migrants entering the country. Joining me right now is Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler. He's the House Chief Deputy Whip and a member of the Rules and Appropriations Committees. He's also an Iraq a war veteran. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this morning. Uh, the border is still wide open despite this conversation now broadening out among people. Do you expect any action from the president? Do you expect any action in Congress to address this? Well, Maria, first off, thanks for having me on. Always enjoy it. What can we expect from Joe Biden when it comes to the border? more of the same. He's not going to do anything. And if Congress does pass legislation, remember, the House, with all Republican votes, passed H.R. 2, the first border security bill passed since the mid-90s. The Senate's not going to run that because they're controlled by Democrats. And even if they did run that and it passed the Senate, Joe Biden's not going to sign it into law. And if he does sign it into law, Maria, Mayorkas isn't going to enforce it. The Biden administration isn't going to enforce it. The only thing that can stop the chaos and the catastrophe we have at the southern border, Maria, is Donald Trump. That's why we need to get him elected. But it's impossible to overstate what's going on at the southern border. We have, we've had, last year, we had more illegal crossings in the United States than natural births here in the United States. You, you now have more illegal immigrants that have crossed than the population of 36 different states. You have over 20,000 military age men from China that have come across. I'll let, I'll let the viewers speculate as to why they think that is. Uh, you have over 300 individuals that were on the terrorist watch list that were apprehended, which begs the question, how many on the terrorist watch list were godaways and that are in the interior of the United States right now waiting to, waiting to unleash havoc whenever they get a call from the Middle East to unleash an international day of jihad? This is a catastrophe. There's one person responsible, that's Joe Biden, and there's one person that can reverse it, and that's Donald Trump. I mean, is this about voting in the upcoming election? Because there just seems to be lots of speculation uh, around this as uh, uh, Merrick Garland, the attorney general, says that he's vowing to fight any voter ID laws. I, I, I find this amazing that the attorney general is telling us he's going to vow to fight voter ID. It's quite remarkable. You can't rent a car in this country without showing an ID. There's office buildings in Washington, D.C. you can't get into unless you show an ID. But then to vote that you don't need an ID? And the Democrats have basically admitted that one of the reasons they want illegal immigrants is so they can have an inflation in the census and expand the areas that are under Democrat-controlled areas. So they can they can inflate the Electoral College. They can inflate their, inflate their representation in the House of Representatives. And just this week, in the Rules Committee, uh, Congresswoman Jayapal from Seattle admitted that she thinks that illegal immigrants should be able to vote at least in local elections. That's just a precursor to allowing illegals to vote in federal elections, which is going to dilute the votes of American citizens. Uh, so they're, they're trying to do this to dilute votes, to increase representation in the House of Representatives. They're also the Blame America First crowd, and they think that we somehow deserve this influx of immigration for some some kind of perceived crimes that Western civilization has committed. Totally backward thinking. But again, going back to Biden, he had 94 executive orders that undermined what Trump did when he was president in his executive orders. Biden could end this crisis tomorrow. Yeah. He could reinstate catch and release. He could he could increase uh, he could he could go back to, for the border uh, increase for the border patrol, and he can make sure that we finish parts of the wall. Uh, he could end the asylum program. There's so much that he can do. Again, 94 executive orders. There's one person that can bring those executive orders back, reverse them. That's President Trump. That's yeah. why this election is so important. So so the jig is up. OK, the jig is up. Now we know why we have this wide open border, putting our country in a vulnerable position so that we could see more voters on the Democrat Party. This is out, this is outrageous, Adam Johnson. Yeah, it is outrageous. And, and what I find stunning is that at this very moment, we're all realizing how outrageous that is. Congressman, um, 14 Democrats actually have sided with Republicans, as Maria pointed out, um, in saying that uh, President Biden's border policies are unacceptable. What do you think the tipping point was for those 14 Democrats to break ranks with the rest of their Democrats? 
Well, I don't think they're acting out of pure motives. The entire Democratic Party has been on the side of illegal immigration, open border policy. I would speculate that those 14 Democrats read some polling where most Americans, including independents, are, are putting a priority on the border and border security. I think them looking ahead this fall and seeing their poll numbers got them to sign on onto that. But their yeah. entire party has, has usually been in lockstep with, with Biden on this open immigration policy.